Zack is back, Haley is blonde, but what did we get on After Laughter? What's up everyone, John from ARTV. I am very excited for this review today. I'm gonna to be talking about the fifth studio album, After Laughter by Paramore, one of my personal favorite bands, and they are on this new chapter in their journey here. An album that was not by any shape or form easy to make. This is a record that really drained them and really saw them saying, hey, can we still do this? Are, are we actually a band? Because as many people who have come and left from Paramore over the years, as many friendships that have been sacrificed, is it really still worth it at the end of the day? But here we have it, back with Zach Farrow, and then of course, adding some new touches to their sound, something that I don't think everyone is gonna be on board with, and I think it is very important to understand that not everyone is going to like or love this at all, and it's something that I think you should dislike it if you dislike the actual sound of it. Not just because, oh, this doesn't sound like Paramore anymore. It's just like, uh, that's is that even a reason? Before this review takes off, be sure to leave a like on the video. And two, follow me on Twitter. I'm at 7,000 followers right now. Once I hit 8,000, that next 1,000, I will pick three of you guys that are following me over there and seem to be interested in the Paramore album at random to win CD copies. Got to be in the US, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I'm not made of money, but I do want to give back to you guys while at the same time shamelessly promoting and plugging my Twitter account. But all you gotta do, be following me over there at ARTV. I tweet all kinds of crazy stuff and shenanigans. I get my opinion on a lot of things over there that I don't even do on YouTube, a lot of brief track reviews and everything. So follow me on Twitter, shameless plug. I love the vibrant sound that the lead single Hard Times put out into the world. It was our first taste of After Laughter and it was something that I didn't necessarily expect but I loved it upon first listen. And honestly, it's just this shiny, attractive, poppy, synthy, dancey song that I've honestly had on repeat since it came out. And I know that's one of those things that all of these publications say, oh, we literally can't stop playing this song or we're gonna have a dance party to this song all day long. This is something that for me is coming from a genuine place. I rarely can say that about songs, especially the amount of music that I consume. So much of it is quickly forgotten, but hard times is the opposite of that. It's something that I still jam hard to this day. And I know it hadn't been out that long, but for a song just over the course of a month to really rule your life like that, it's saying good things. And there's two things here that I really think helped me get into Paramore new style. It's something where you can't hold back. And I look at it like this. I know there's a song called Pool on here, and I think that I was able to make a pretty good analogy from that. Don't just dip your toes into the sound of Paramore, their new style, their new poppier and more glamorous synthy directions. It's something that is very much guitar driven, but at the same time, you cannot just put your toes in. It's like, I don't know, I, I don't know, I'm testing the water, seems a little cold. Dive in, dive head first into that pool, and that is when you will find the sound and the meaning of this record. I highly recommend going and watching interviews that they've done with this. It really does tell a lot more about it. And a lot of these songs lyrically might seem kind of simple, and some of them are, and I can give that to you. I could understand some people complaining that maybe they're not as deep as they used to be, or at least they don't seem to be. That is a fair criticism. But honestly, the nuance and detail that is put into the instrumentation here, and honestly, a lot of the vocal parts and lyrical content as well, is why I am loving, for the most part, After Laughter. And the other thing that I was saying, other than the fact that don't hold back, don't just dip your toes, there's a quote that really helped me, and it's something that I didn't even hear until later in my listening cycle with After Laughter. I think I played this thing like 12 times in full before I reviewed it, which is about three times the amount of time that I normally spend listening to a record. So you know I really wanted to get this one right. I wanted to make sure that I got my feelings right because I was conflicted. I was going back and forth on some things. But then I stumbled onto an iHeartRadio interview that Paramore did and Haley Williams said this regarding the album's title. After Laughter is about the look on people's faces when they're done laughing. If you watch somebody long enough, there's always this look that comes across their face when they're done smiling, and I always find it really fascinating to wonder what it is that brought them back to reality. So that's what After Laughter is. That is just like a bomb being dropped to me, and it's something like a light bulb going off in my head because 
that just flashed and signaled and brought together everything that I was trying to piece together about this record. And I think that's when it finally just clicked as a whole. There were a lot of songs that were firing on all cylinders to me, and while I still do have least favorites and detractors for After Laughter as a whole, I think that is the turning point for me, and it's something that I think that you should embrace as a quote going into this album. Let's talk about the overarching themes and styles of this record before we get into my track by track analysis of this album. I think that overall it does have a very similar vibe going all throughout and that's really what they needed for this record. If they were going to go for it they needed to go all in and Taylor York and Zach Farrow really did a great job of bringing that to the instrumentation and obviously their producer and bass player Justin Meldell Johnson did a great job of making this kind of give like a, a little bit of a funky pep to it. It's something that I can't quite put in words, but overall it has a great flow. It's like the 80s meets the 90s meets modern alternative, and it's all pretty much a nice mishmash of all of those things. And lyrically, I would say this is about judgment, redemption, friendships, hope, depression, losing hope, anger, and just not knowing what to do with all of the turmoil in between. And I think that Haley Williams, as a writer, often goes to the safe space of dreams. And sometimes she finds that maybe even the dreams aren't so safe. You saw her writing about that on Daydreaming on their last record, and dreams come into play several times on After Laughter. So I find this to be very much connected. It's a great album to really just vibe to, especially at night. I found it to be particularly interesting the second time I played it, I was driving on my way home, and it just, it really started to take over that time. I was mixed the first listen, and it started to go from there. And I did go back and forth several times. It's a conflicting album, but here are my track-by-track -track breakdowns of these. I'm going to try to not dwell on anything too long, but I do want to give general thoughts on each one. You already heard me talk about hard times in this video and of course my track review, my dedicated review that I did over on Beyond AR TV. But like I said, I'll say this, it's catchy, it's infectious as hell, it's a great lead single and it needs to see more success. This song does a great job at balancing some really, really clever lyrical content and some of the lines here, just the way that they're delivered, I love that. Just like, you hit me with lightning, maybe I come alive. The way that Haley shouts that and it's just so sarcastic, basically saying like, you're not gonna make me change, but you know, you're gonna give me this this huge jolt or this huge push you think you're gonna change me you know maybe now I won't be depressed or maybe now like everything's gonna be okay that's not how it works and she's clearly saying that all throughout this track it's something that is very down very downtrodden but it also talks about the survival of the band and her instinct to get back to writing even when she thought Paramore was done Just let me cry a little bit On my first listen to Rose Colored Boy, I definitely did find the cheerleader style chance to be a little bit out there, maybe a little bit questionable, but as I played this more, I found that they fit perfectly. I was like, how did they know what they were doing here? How did they know that this would work so well? Think maybe something like Gwen Stefani meets like some older pop as well, mixed together with a bunch of 80s sounds. Rose Colored Boy is very much kind of a pop rock jam that could be huge. I love this one and I love the way that she sings, just let me cry a little bit more. Let me have this, you know, this Rose Colored Boy, this person that has everything and this positive attitude keeps telling Haley to, you know, keep your head up. Maybe this is Chad Gilbert. Maybe this is somebody else in her life but clearly she's around someone who's telling her and all of these hard times that you know she's gonna get through this it's gonna be okay and she's basically saying you know what just let me have my moment let me cry in the car I don't want anybody else to see me but just let me be alone, please. There's a lot of really cool instrumentation going on in the background here. I love some of the sultering guitars. It's catchy as hell. They're nuanced, and it's not just the riffing. That's something that's very important to note about this record. It's very detailed playing from Taylor York, and a lot of these bass lines, like I said, very funky, shape up the tunes, and Zach's drumming has definitely evolved as well.
Told You So definitely sees York sliding all over the place with those guitars. I like that. It's kind of finicky with the way that it moves around, and it's not quite super steady, but at the same time, it's steady enough to be super, super catchy. It's very memorable, and I will say that maybe it gets a bit tedious with repeated listens because I was listening to this song a lot before even the album dropped. It was the second single from this thing. I did a track review. I definitely praised it, but with repeated listens, I think that's faded a little bit for me, and maybe it was something that I was just like, wow, I'm very excited that this is out in the world and I do think that I jumped the gun on that one whenever I did the track review I apologize for that but I still really do love this song it's something that I stand by as being a great tune I like the lyrics although very simplistic at the same time they don't need to be super detailed in order to get something across and I think that there's a lot of great visuals that Haley paints with her words here even though she doesn't say a ton she doesn't have to if that makes sense she's tired of feeling that pressure of basically saying oh somebody's just looking over my shoulder somebody's going to put me down I you know I tried to be an optimist here but it's not gonna work anymore for me if I never look up, maybe I'll never Forgiveness is definitely a slow burn for me. It's something that kind of had that effect where it creeps up on you. It's not a top favorite still, but it's ingrained in my mind at this point. The first couple of listens, I was like, I, I don't know about this song. It kind of drowns in its influences here. It's very much influenced by the 80s, and I can see that, but maybe the nostalgia is a bit overwhelming, and I still don't have a ton of praise to throw for it. It's just something that I can go to bat for because it's a strong, smartly written tune, at least lyrically. I get what they're talking about here, and pretty much everything is very connected. If you look at the lyrics between this song and really the rest of the record, forgiveness and all of these other themes of friendship and then rebuilding, starting fresh, and then having to tear it all down again, that's definitely something if you pay attention to the lyrical content here. They're not just songs about random subject matter. As soon as I read the track listing for this, before I even saw the album, I knew that this was going to be something that hit hard. And I saw the song titles here, and Forgiveness is one where you can kind of easily look at that title and see, I bet I know what this could be about. And Forgiveness is something where she's saying, I'm tired of just handing it out, I feel like. I'm tired of handing out forgiveness whenever I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can forgive and forget. I've been told to do that, but I don't know if I can. It's got this warm guitar lead and kind of a little bit of a backing bass line here that's not super prominent, but at the same time, it is there. And this song just kind of coos lyrically. And that is one problem that I have with this record. I don't feel like Haley unleashes that often. And while the album doesn't really call for it all the time, I don't know, I kind of miss that. And sometimes I do find myself wanting to rock out, maybe wanting to get a little bit of a stronger vocal performance from her instead of something that's a little bit more muted. And tracks like this are kind of the most persistent whenever I think of like, eh, I guess lower of the totem pole type songs that I don't care for as much, but still really do enjoy. This is Freddy on channel. Most people walk around these days. <laughs> everything is are you okay? I love everything. Everybody's walking around faking it. Everybody acts so happy, and that's something that I always try not to do. I never try to be that person whatsoever because everything is not always peachy keen okay all the time, and it's definitely not. In fact, most of the time it's not. And I think a lot of you guys can relate to that fake happy you look at these things you look at like Jimmy Fallon or all these other people on like late night TV or just television shows in general or what you see like on YouTube a lot of it is just so forced and everybody is so fake positive and all of these vloggers yelling what up guys yo what's up bro everything's so good I feel like this song just kind of speaks to me because I hate that culture. I cannot stand it. In fact, I would go as far as to say I detest it. It's something that I want to get further and further away from me. And this song, Fake Happy, has, is kind of juxtaposed with a happier and a slower side because it comes in with these choppy pianos that I just didn't see working for Paramore, but here, Taylor York made them work. And over Haley's vocals, it just, it, it fits perfectly. It starts off as kind of like a slower type song almost like a, a rough demo and like the vocal quality because it's very low in the mix but I love that I love that it starts off with that and this light acoustic guitar before breaking into it those pianos and then the guitar riffs are really really choppy 
fun and it really drives the song. It's something that I really can't get enough of. The chorus is super, super earwormy. Something like basically saying, leave me alone. You know, I don't want to be asked how I am constantly. Oh, how are you doing? Like, not that great, actually. I struggle with anxiety and depression. That's Haley Williams, basically. I feel like saying that there. And then later in the song, I like that it kind of brings the ba da ba da ba ba It kind of reminds me of Brick by Boring Brick, which I just recently said was something that was very unique at the time of Brand New Eyes. They hadn't really done anything that felt theatric like that. And here, I won't say that it feels like that. It's almost kind of sarcastic. It's not just like a stupid like, whoa, uh, uh, oh, like type chorus or anything like that. This serves as the bridge of the song and just kind of carries it effortlessly into its final act. Oh man, I hope you got your Kleenexes ready for this one because 26 is a tearjerker if I've ever heard one. This is a devastating tune, easily in my top three for After Laughter. It is so powerful and I love it. It's an acoustic song and it was something that Haley Williams said she was waiting for Taylor to put the music to. She was waiting for him to write that music and then these lyrics just flowed out of her so naturally. And I love that about it. It's so honest, basically saying, hold on to hope while you've got it. Hold on to anything that you feel is special because it can be torn away from you in a heart Beat. And she talks of this person that just seemed to put her down, basically keep her in her place, locked away. You know, like every time I'm floating up here, you pull me back down here. And I love how the vocals just really seem pulled of life. Like they've just been sucked right out of her. And it's something where she's singing regularly and then that final line before the chorus hits, you know, man, you really bring me down. And it's just so downtrodden and the voice kind of goes from fluctuation here to just being pulled down like off of a cliff. Basically what you do to this person's emotions. And I feel like this can be applied to a lot of people. Maybe you're trapped in a relationship or a friendship or a dead end job or something that you're not happy with. You know, it just, it really brings you down. It's like anytime you maybe get a spark in your eye, it's just immediately shot out of the sky. So I love what she's doing here. The string section is beautiful. This song and Paramore mesh effortlessly. And this type of music, just it's not something that I knew that they had in them. So they brought in some friends, had some extra string arrangements on the track. They really just kind of carry this off into a sweeping orchestral feel. And it is quite graceful. It's something that I never knew I wanted, but now that I have it, I can't get enough. Never thought that the deep end of an ocean could train the fantasy of you. That is a line in this song that really spoke to me, and I love the way that Haley sings it as well. Her vocals kind of like stretch a little bit more, and I like when they get a little bit more raw and passionate. And Pool is such an interesting and captivating tune. In fact, it's turning into one of my favorites. It starts off with this kind of weird loop. It's kind of like electronic, and it's got a different vibe to it, and then the guitars kind of cut in, and they're a little bit like jagged in places, and the way that Haley's vocals cut in, it just seems perfect to me, and it's kind of an attempt at a love song here. It's something that's basically saying like, you know, nobody hurts me the way that you do. And then she comes through with some other lines that kind of contradict that because it seems like she's okay with a lot of it. And obviously, if you've seen a lot of the songs that she's written over the years, like Still Into You, for example, there's always something else going on there, whether it be in the lyrics or the music. It's not just a straight up love song ever. There's always something else going on. And I would say this one is the most hard to tell that it is about that sort of thing. I think it could be applied a lot of different ways and that's why I'm liking it so so much. I will say that there's kind of a persistent problem that does appear on pool once again and it's not a huge detractor for me but it's something that I've definitely noticed. It's like each time the song like kind of builds up and then it goes into this kind of predictable bridge or else final chorus of the track dive back into it just kind of repeats a lot of the stuff and if you throw it back to like told you so for example or even forgiveness really a lot of these things just kind of blend together whenever you try to separate the bridge of the track in particular. And I'm not saying that they don't have strong ones here at all, it's just that some of them do kind of fall into a routine and kind of cruise control.
I'm feeling a little bit mixed on our next track, Grudges, here. This is one that Zach Farrow brought to the table, and then Haley Williams wrote lyrics about her and Zach on this, and apparently Zach didn't know until afterwards. Zach sings on this one, and Grudges is all about their friendship over time, how it was burned off for a while, and then it came back together. And now they're saying, we gotta let go of these things. We gotta let go of what's holding us down. Why can't we just hang out? Why can't we just laugh till we cry like we did so long ago, maybe when we were in the band, or before even Paramore started. They were friends even before that. She knew both of the Pharaoh brothers. So here, I do like what's going on lyrically. I like the musicality of the track to an extent. I won't say it's a top favorite, but I think there's a few things that really just hold me back from fully loving this one. Oh man, I cannot stop singing the praises of Caught in the Middle. This track is everything I could have wanted from like catchy Paramore. I was praying for one to be so catchy, so much fun, something that I could just keep playing all summer long, and I got it with Caught in the Middle. This song, I cannot shake it from my head. It's in there right now. I hear those brown brown guitars kicking it off and just going all throughout this track. And then it adds in a lot of other things. I like the vocal melody on this. In fact, I adore it. It's something where Haley comes off a lot more rocking on this one, and they did kind of change up the musicality of it. It went through a few phases before they landed on this final stage here. And then we get to that bridge where I, I just, I, I can't, I can't deal with how good it is. Don't need no one else. I can sabotage me by myself. That is self-destructive right there, but Haley knows that she's like a ticking time bomb sometimes, ready to go off, ready to really just explode on people because she's talked about a lot of things that she's really never brought to the surface before lyrically. A lot of problems and a lot of things that have brought her down in the past and have limited her and is really just letting go of that aggression here. And Caught in the Middle maybe isn't about all of that, but it seems to be more about like just growing discontent maybe with where you are, your current age, looking at that and being like, wow, holy hell, I am really getting old at this point. Justin Meldell Johnson does a masterful job on production and the bass, which truly steals the show here, especially as we get up to that bridge. It's something where the bass is really just leading the way, that thumping feeling that just creeps up on you the more you listen to it. Ba-doom, boom, boom, ba-doom, boom, boom. And then Taylor kind of slides in that little guitar riff all throughout it, and it's something that's not just a couple of riffs here, it's a couple of scattered notes that sound great before we get to that part that Haley sings, don't need no one else I can sabotage me all by myself. And it's something that's so much fun. I'm telling you guys, if you don't even listen to the whole album, you gotta play this one. Idol worship definitely has a weird feeling to it, but I like the title here. It's a twist, it's a play on that. Like idol as in like not active, and then idol the things that we worship idol worship, basically saying maybe we shouldn't worship everything that we see. Maybe we should focus on other stuff instead, instead of just constantly obsessing over one or two or three things or maybe the things that we can't do. Why do we worship these things and aspire to be these things that we know that maybe that's not the best thing to be focusing on at this time. And this song musically is kind of jarring. It's got like kind of like a whirring synth thing that is like looped over and over again. And then it adds in the guitars on top of that. And it doesn't exactly line up perfectly. I will say that it can be a bit off-putting. I find myself kind of feeling the same way that I do about grudges. It's like sometimes I really like this song, other times I feel like I'm almost ready to skip over it, at least parts of it, but then it'll get to the chorus, and I love how Haley just sings that part, don't let me let you down. I love that. It hits so hard, basically very sarcastically saying that, you know, I'm not going to be this person that you need to be, you know. Instead, I'm going to do exactly what I need to do for me because I have been through hell. As the song progresses, I feel like idol worship definitely develops a different feel to it though. It's almost channeling like some 70s vibes in the guitar tones here, and I like that. It's very kind of bubbly, inviting, and it's something that I can groove with, especially the vocals as well. As this track progresses, you're seeing more and more of what Haley was holding back, I feel like, at the beginning of the song. I don't know exactly what to say about No Friend. It's a song that is very much weird, and it features Aaron Weiss, the vocalist from Me Without You. And if you know anything about them, they're known for kind of like experimental stuff, some spoken word, and I feel like that's exactly what's going on here. Almost some poetry, maybe about Paramore, perhaps. That's what Haley Williams alluded to. I can make out a lot of lyrics, and I can hear some of the references to their own career. And 
I, I don't know. I don't know how well this lines up. And the instrumental is very repetitive as it goes, and it just kind of loops. And it does get in my head, but it's like sometimes I kind of want it to leave. And it's like, stop looping, please. And then you like try to hear those lyrics. They're in the mix, but they were left so low that you really can't make out the lyrics. So it does get a bit frustrating. And then the main part that you hear at the very end of the song, unless you're listening on some very good speakers, which I did the majority of the time I was listening to this, I could make out a lot of it. But if you're just casually listening to this, you're only going to be able to pick up on the end. And that's really where they're talking about like a coat. And you know, if you have any more information, find it. Doesn't really make sense to me. But I mean, uh, cool, cool that they tried something new. Cool that it made the record if that's what they wanted. But I'm not really feeling this one. Definitely my least favorite. Take me down with your quiet Of all the weapons you fight with Your silence is the most violent Finally, we get to the finale of After Laughter. Tell me how. Does track number 12 deliver? Hell yes it does. This is a shining light that definitely seems very, very dismal. It's something that comes through and really lets you know exactly what was going on with the band during this time period. It's not something that's like, oh, you know, it was just like a little bit of fighting or, you know, we're gonna get through it easily and it's gonna be okay. This is somebody who doesn't know how to reassure themselves. They don't know how they are going to fight this. You know, tell me how, tell me how I'm gonna lift myself out of this because I feel like it's not gonna happen at all. And some of this definitely seems like it was directed at former bassist Jeremy Davis. Something about the silence. <sighs> the way that hits, the way that line hits, it's just, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around. Beautiful piano leads carry this tune and I love that. It adds in the percussion slowly, kind of like this kick drum that pounds that I did find is kind of distracting at first, but the more I listened, the more I definitely kind of grooved with it and understood why it was there. And then I love how tastefully they slide in the guitar and the bass here. The drums warm up a little bit as well to just something more than the kick drum. And you hear those guitars that definitely feel like they're inspired by maybe the Indie Hemisphere, the XX, some other stuff like that. The bass is slow and subtle as well. And the vocals, as you listen to those, you can hear the hurt in the voice. And whenever a singer can convey that, just through the music, through a track, you know that you've get recorded true, just true heartache and true heartbreak and emotional downpour to tape. And that is something that you don't always get. You listen to a lot of disingenuous stuff. And while here, maybe not every emotion on After Laughter really translated as they wanted it to, moments like this and 26 truly crush and rip your heart out. And especially some of the other more upbeat moments as well, honestly. Even though they are upbeat musically, it's something that if you're listening to the lyrical content and paying attention, it's quite depressing. So this, I feel like, is a a very, very fitting finale, really sums up exactly everything about this era. I love it. I love everything from the Pastel album cover to really just the honesty in the lyrics, something that is very refreshing and appreciated. And while I might not be in love with this album overall, I definitely think it's gonna stand tall in their catalog. And I'm interested to see where this is gonna fall in line in terms of my ranking of their records. I'm gonna be doing a ranked episode very soon on Paramore, every album from worst to best. And while I don't feel like they have any bad albums at all, all. I wouldn't rate any lower than a 4 out of 5, uh, maybe a 3.5. We will see with time where those all stack up. So personally, for After Laughter, I am really, really loving the majority of this album. There's a lot of great vibes going on here. You can tell that they poured their hearts into it. It's just that maybe it doesn't always quite pay off. And I feel like some tracks are a little bit too forgettable, maybe too simple and predictable. For me, I'm giving this a strong four out of five. Thanks for watching my After Laughter review. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and make sure you're following me on Twitter to make sure that you're eligible to win a copy on CD. If you'd like to see more Paramore reviews and countdowns and that sort of thing, the whole playlist is right here or another recent video right here. Socials in the description and I'll see you very soon for more reviews right here on ARTV.